Born and raised in Westlands, Sonia Birdi grew up in a family that emphasized on discipline, especially as far as their religion is concerned. Um, I come from a culture where, where uh, you know, we, we were very strict or we are very strict um, because we, you know, we have certain principles within even the religious framework of the culture. Um, so, but saying that, I, I have learned a lot from that discipline, which is very important in somebody's, uh, in somebody's life and upbringing. She studied at Our Lady of Mercy School and Loreto Convent Msongari before heading to India for her Bachelor of Commerce degree. She later pursued a master's degree at the University of Sheffield Harlem in the UK. I would like to look at it from the view of the Kenyans of, of the middle-income aged group. All of us, all that sector, have really been focusing and promoting their children on better education. Because without education, you know, you can't get good jobs, uh, you can't get promotions. She is currently running an engineering and construction company, a family business situated in the industrial area. She has also started a youth empowerment program to teach the youth how to write CVs as a way of landing better jobs. Besides, she has been supporting Adekia Nasri in Nairobi. I was first actually uh, an accountant and then I changed my mind. I started, I did my MBA in uh, business and broadcasting. Uh, by that, uh, doing that degree of business and broadcasting, I got into the media profession. Um, so I've been uh, in the media field for quite a while and I think um, the only connection it has uh, to politics in any way is that I was a people's person. Um, and I always, wherever I went, I was looking for the betterment of the society and the people. Looking around while undertaking her everyday duties, she sees the potential of better opportunities for the people, from better infrastructure, health and sanitation to a more developed economic zone. Without a good health and sanitation system, most of the women in Makadar are, are seriously sick because of the health and sanitation system here. Uh, with, uh, with, with, the, with the lack of toilet facilities that we have in our area, uh, some of these leaders, uh, these, these ladies have got um, uh, diseases uh, that come from having bad uh, health and sanitation. Uh, and secondly, is the infrastructure of Makadara. I mean, today if you go down a road in Makadara, you see it's it's broken down or uh, you know the 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 power lines are are not um, up to standard um, why i'm talking about these two things is because you know when you focus on women and health and sanitation is the most important bit you know if your if your health is not there then really how are you going to get wealth if you don't have health and why infrastructure because um, most of Makadara is uh, where the industries are. If the industries are in a place where the infrastructure is broken down um, and they don't have the infrastructure to support their businesses, really, we are not assisting them in any way. They do need a push in the right direction so that the economy within Makadara can earn them more revenue. This becomes her biggest motivator to join politics and make Makadara a better place for her people and industrial development. I want to see Makadara, uh, you know, having a better growth rate right now than, than it is having before. I'd like to see at least 80% of the roads well built. I'd like to see a railway system that's working for Makadara. I'd like to see, you know, um, the, the standard of living of the people in the slums better. I'd like to see more employment opportunities for the youth. And I'd like to see children smiling. So, how exactly did the idea of politics cross your mind anyway? I think... Uh, the, the, uh, the way in which I got involved in politics, if, if that is what you're asking me, 
is uh, through the through the social work that we have been doing in in Makadara. Um, you know, we my father has had a factory here, like many other uh, Asian industries have been here for the last fifty years, and um, we spend a lot of uh, our time uh, and and uh, and money helping uh, the people who cannot make it in life, who are living under the minimum wage. And uh, I think the turning point was when there was a fire in Sinai. And I went to find out where Tomboya Hall was. I went to see what was going on. We sat down with Red Cross and the chiefs of, of that place and I found out uh, what they lack. And I made a list of those things and I went and knocked on the doors of the industries who I didn't know either. Uh, having worked here for quite a while, I never had an opportunity to knock on their door and ask them, are they okay? Um, that's where it all started. Um, and then, the, you know, the area representatives of that place one day knocked on my door in my office and said, we'd like you to stand as an MP in Makadara. However, she admits that it was not an easy decision to make in her life. But mind you, my answer was not straight away. I requested them to give me two weeks to think about it. And those were the, one of the, the most two silent weeks of my life because I did not talk to anybody about it. Here were some people who had brought an opportunity and they'd asked me to, to stand up and take it. And I didn't want anybody to influence my thinking in any way. Uh, so I thought about it and after two weeks, uh, we had a discussion and, then, and henceforth the, the journey started. But why Makadara and not Westlands or Parklands, where the Asian community is highly concentrated in terms of settlement? I'm standing in, in Makadara because uh, we've had industries in Makadara for the last 40 years. And uh, this working in Makadara for a long time makes you realize where exactly you want change to be. As uh, Mahatma Gandhi very famously said, be the change you want to, to be or you want to see. Um, for me, going back home is sleeping three, four hours in 24 hours. And I'd rather stand uh, as, uh, as a member of the National Assembly in the place where I spend most of my hours, which is where I work. Asked if the decision would be seen as betraying the Asian community, Sonia responds by saying that she already have enough support from them. Oh, not at all. 90% of the, I think a large portion of the industries in, in Makadara are, are Asian businesses. And uh, I think if I succeed in um, in standing for elections or standing in, in, in Makadara, I think um, if we succeed in bringing change in Makadara, at the end of the day, they will, uh, they, they will have no option absolutely but to accept and to rejoice the fact that uh, there is a Kenyan lady of Asian origin who has brought this change to them. It is said that politics is a dirty game. Are you not afraid that you may be following a dangerous career path? You know, I look at myself as a lotus, which who's, a lotus can only live on, on a dirty pond. Uh, but you see, the reason I, I did this was because of the genuine change that um, I wanted to bring into Makadara. And yes, it did take them some time to understand but eventually they did. She believes that it is time women not only claims their position in leadership, but they should now take up the challenge and face the electorates. You know, it's those times of knowing somebody to get somewhere have gone, especially in politics. You know, if you today you want to join politics, go to any chama. There are so many that are registered there you will find out where exactly they're registered or head office is and you tell them i would like to join your party right and they will tell you these are these are the, the conditions um and and you join up and yes women are really going further because um now they have a voice i you know we should 
I think we sh it, it is something that we should uh, embrace and not fear. Sonia intends to run for the Makadara parliamentary seat on the URP ticket. You see, I've always been in, in URP. And uh, the reason why I've been with URP was, like I told you, where, where we were working in, in Sinai. The people who wanted me to stand as an MP, they wanted me to join uh, the URP party. And uh, remember those two weeks I was talking to you about that were very silent? I was, I did even ask them one day, I said, why URP and why not any other party? And uh, they said, well, they have reasons. And they really believe strongly that Mishma Ruto was the right leader for them or is the right leader. I had an interview with him, I had a meeting with him um, briefly around one year ago. Uh, and which lasted around 30 minutes and, um, and 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 that was basically the deciding point I can't go into the intricate details of what was discussed in that meeting but uh, I felt that uh, that was the right party for me at that time her main competitor happens to be Ruben Dolo, but she believes she has all it takes to make Makadara a better place for its habitants to live I believe that I can make it. Um, I believe it's not very difficult to understand economically the problems of a constituency. Uh, you, you have to be intelligent enough and uh, to understand what the problem is. Um, and at the end of the day, Josephine, everything is, is a journey. Uh, if you start today trying to research something or read something, tomorrow you will know a bit better. You know. Um, so what makes it, makes me better? Um, I don't know. Maybe you have an interview with them and then you try and gauge for yourself what makes me better. Madam Sonia, commonly known as Muheshimiwa in Makadara, has her own way of reaching out to the people as a way of campaigning. We do things to get out onto the, to the ground. We walk, we speak to people, we meet um, ladies' organizations. We go to churches, we talk to people. Um, in fact, there was one time we had a rally also, a political rally, actually twice we had a political rally within through, Ma through Makadara, which was quite uh, well received. And um, other than that, I, I go into the industries, I talk to, to the businessmen, I ask them what their problem are, problems are. And uh, sometimes uh, w through lunch, when the employees are, uh, uh, having their lunch, I'll go and I'll talk to them. Um, this is my way of, of getting out to them. And um, so far, that's how, how my campaign has been going. And it's been going well so far. How are things working out for you so far? There are very many challenges. Uh, but I'd like to think of them as learning experiences. Because... Uh, any, any career is like uh, climbing a mountain or climbing a ladder. There is not a day when you will not have a challenge. Uh, but uh, being a fighter, uh, you get over it. You find a way of making things work. And that's, that's the thing about being that sort of personality, that sort of leader that, that can take our, our country ahead, is you never give up. And no is never going to be an answer for you. It has to work out somehow. As an advice to Kenyans, during this electioneering period, Sonia has this to say. The advice I'd give to the Kenyan public is this, is to use their uh, voting rights very carefully. They need to be very serious about who they are choosing. Uh, they need to um, exercise, uh, you know, like for example, there, there are only 15 days left to register as a voter. And perhaps people are thinking it's going to be fine or extended. It might not be. They need to register as voters today in their nearest polling stations. Um, and if they seriously want a change in, in Kenya, then uh, they need to get out in numbers and, and vote for the person that they feel is the right person to lead this country. Sonia Birdi faces the acid test of becoming a possible iron lady from the Asian community. 
Well, as the election date nears, it seems that more people are unveiling themselves. And today we present to you Sonia Birdi, who is vying for the parliamentary seat in Makadara constituency. You had her profile, you had what she wants to do in Makadara, and I hope that you're going to make the change to vote wisely for the best leader. Josephine Awera, GBS.